we are live. Welcome to Small Soldiers Thoughts Film, and there will be spoilers in this video. Now, excuse me. I think this lighting setup is better than the previous one, but yeah, it's, it's as good as it's going to get for right now. So, we, yeah, this is a long video, but there are time codes for different sections in the description box. Now, my own film critic rating for this is to be 100%, yeah, it's, it's a 7 out of 10, but my personal rating, yeah, I'd have to go with a 9 out of 10. I love this movie. Now, let's see. First couple of off-topic things, there was a recent episode, it was the Parents Weekend episode of Paranoia on YouTube, excellent episode. I, between, they, they just put up another episode, I have not watched that yet, but I can imagine. I did think the, the first one was great as well, but it was a little distracting that Katie kept accidentally playing for the wrong team, but anyway. And Ben Carson still does not know how the department he runs works. Only in politics and, you know, where rich people, rich powerful people are involved, can you get away with hiring someone who is completely unqualified for a job that is at all important? Ben Carson is so easily confused, shows so little interest in understanding how his job works, I wouldn't hire him to flip burgers. We know for a fact that he's not, quote-unquote, just stupid. Otherwise, he would not be a well-renowned brain surgeon. But clearly, that's where his expertise lies. If you were taking a test in school and you knew as little about the subject as Ben Carson and others who have gotten jobs that they clearly weren't qualified for, you, you would fail that test. And honestly, if you... If you fail a test like that, you should not be given a job that the tests for. I, th I think you should not be able to get a job without passing a test that shows you understand what the job is. And it's ridiculous that today, in 2019, this, this is still an issue. Now, that brings us to first section. which is called Notes Taken While Watching. R.I.P. of Phil Hartman, you were hilarious. I love how messed up this film is. I really love the Gwendy dolls. Their quotes, the way it's saying that the stream looks like it's going fine. Yeah, their quotes, the way they look and behave, and for voicing them, it was absolutely perfect to hire Christina Ricci who played creepy as Wednesday Adams before. And I love Sarah Michelle Gellar's performance in this. I, in gen I, I like her in general. I'm not sure I've seen her play creepy outside of this, but she does perfect here. And part of it is, of course, the, also, you know, also the both of them have such feminine, girly voices, or rather can take them on. I'm not entirely sure Christina Ricci's natural voice is necessarily that feminine, but she can do one without, like, it sounding ridiculous. You know, that is, of course, an important aspect of it. It's not enough for the voices to be creepy, and they all talk like valley girls, which is how we'd expect Barbie girl, Barbie dolls to talk. You know, it just, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I don't know why Lisa Simpson was so surprised when her Malibu Stacy was saying such insipid things, you know, but yeah, that's, that's, it's, it's how we'd figure they, they talk. I love the way this uses music, references to other mu movies, including quotes, movie music, and even film clips. I love Jay Moore, but I do prefer him in the short-lived show Action to him being more dorky in this and 
he was in that movie. Was was it called Polly? I I did a brief search on IMDb and it did not find Polly. But that's I don't know. Maybe that's just what it's called here. But you know, I'm not American. But yeah, he's apparently in that. I haven't watched it. I try to steer clear of bad children's movies. I quite like David Cross in this and elsewhere, which is not to say that he hasn't made. He's he's in some bad stuff. With that said, I, ha I have not watched, and I probably will never ever watch the Alvin and the Chipmunks movies. I've watched the first Tor story once. It's well made. It led to the creation of Army Men One and Two, which I enjoy playing. This movie, however, I love. It's probably not as good as Toy Story. I enjoyed the demo of the RGS video game of this, but uh, when, I, when I looked it up, it only said there was like an adventure game, so maybe the game only feels like an RGS. Maybe only the demo. Maybe the demo only shows the part of the game that plays like an RTS. I, I don't know. I've owned the VHS since it came out and have watched this countless times over the years. For some reason, it's been a while since I watched it other than, you know, watching it for this video. I, I legit do not know why. Would it at all help the lighting if I move this thing closer? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure if it changed anything. Now, I've watched the first two Gremlins movies. I enjoyed both of them. I liked Joe Dante's segment of the Twilight Zone movie. Inner Space is okay. I've watched Evolution. It was fine, I guess. I, I love Looney Tunes back in action. Really, the only negative thing I can say about it at all is that it is somewhat insubstantial. It's like trying to eat, like, some, some snack food, you know, popcorn or chips or something, in place of dinner. You know, it's fun while it lasts, but ultimately you do want something more afterwards. And I don't really think Steve Martin, as a live-action cartoon character, is all that funny, which, I mean, I love him elsewhere, so it's not... Yeah. It might be the... It might be the only movie where I don't like the, the Steve Martin performance. Nah. Love Brendan Fraser in it, Jenna Elfman in it. Now, the writers have written similar movies, some of which I quite enjoy. I will admit, I don't know much about G.I. Joe or He-Man, so I realize that's, you know, I, I honestly didn't even realize that this took inspiration from those before reading it on IMDb. So, yeah. Now, I don't have a lot to say about the trailers. I do like the kind of, you know, the mysterious first 30 seconds of the trailers before you realize it's small soldiers, you know. It, it has lesser effect when you just look up the trailer on YouTube. But watching it in a movie theater, the first time you see this trailer in a movie theater, it probably has a real, excuse me, a real good effect. Like, I, I don't remember the, the Mr. Bean movie, but I do remember the first time I watched the trailer for it in a movie theater, I did not know that it was about a Mr. Bean movie until the reveal. And it, it does that, I, I think it might have the, the deep voice trailer, you know, voiceover guy doing the inner world kind of thing. And just, yeah, it, it's, 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 it's a neat trick. I'm not going to claim that it's some kind of genius thing. Yeah, it still seems to be... It keeps saying dropped frames, but it doesn't look... It looks basically fine to me. Now... The Gorgonites aren't even in the first trailer at all. I don't even remember if they're in the second one, but the... Yeah, I, th I think there's a brief clip of Archer, but it's a shot that focuses on Chip Hazard, so, yeah. And there's a bit in the trailer where, you know, Brick Bazooka having been torn, you know, 
in in half basically in the trailer he says it's just a flesh wound sir was that the original line or was it deceptive trailer editing i mean sometimes they put out a trailer before they finalize i mean certainly it is it is a funny line for for that but you know in the movie he says i'm pretty messed up sir and i i mean i i think both you know fit okay with the with the mouth movements of of the of the doll sorry action figure so it's not Yeah, it's it's not that you know it's it's always annoying when when they change a line and then it's like okay wow that does not fit at all and from here on out it's the notes that I took while watching those were basically the notes that I t took before watching but again there were so few of them it seems kind of a waste to to put to, yeah, to have an entire section devoted to just so few, you know, com comparatively, you know, I had a ton of them for, you know, the Terminator movies that I've done so far. And yes, the rest of them are coming. Now, immediately Gilmars has fired the entire board. There is no longer anybody else. And David Cross's presentation is so unrehearsed and low tech. And Jay Moore is so eager to please Mars, you know. And then, you know what? We'll be ready in three months. And all this, yeah. And I, I quite like the, you know, these are soldiers. What do soldiers need? Hats? Cam cam camouflage? Miss Cagle. Enemies, sir. <laughs> I really, I she's she's so good. She always like it's it's as if she can like read his mind or something. She always knows exactly what he wants and exact. Just yeah, I mean, the character is essentially just his right hand, you know, in 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 the body of of a person, you know, which is. Of course, a pretty messed up thing to do with a female character, but I, I do think it is funny. Very creepy skull that Chip's head is put on. Dick Miller is likable, as he very often is. I, I, I'm not going to go out on a limb and say usually, because I haven't watched, or at least, or maybe I just don't remember enough. He has been in a bunch of things I've seen. The Terminator... I think he's in both Gremlins movies. He's certainly in the first one. He's in the 1960... Is this just 1960 straight up version of... Huh. I do not remember. The... the Audrey, the, the flesh-eating plant. I forget what it's called. He eats flowers in that movie. I, I personally don't think it's as bad as others say. It, I think the the they do some great verbal comedy with the you know I, f I forget I think he yeah he's like an he's an immigrant from some from somewhere and he doesn't speak completely perfect English so he says stuff like it's a finger of speech and you know there's a, there's like a hold up or something and the guy says don't try anything try anything I've never tried anything in my life. And there's a there's this bit where he knows that the plant eats people, and the other person doesn't. So they're like, I, I forget. It's it's something. Yeah, I I I'm I'm gonna butcher it. So I'm not even, even gonna try. But it's something like the other person says, you know, oh the children, the you know, it is, yeah, some something about the children are gonna love it, and he. Re he repeats just a few of the words and suddenly it sounds really morbid and really it kind of is like he's realizing this is gonna this is gonna be terrible now once the toys are completely alone in the room it does not take long for you know chip to attack archer and you know at the at first we only see them turn and stare at each other the sibling relationship between Christy and Timmy is very credible. 
and Alan badly wants to impress Christy. And Chip shoots Timmy in the forehead with like a little plastic or rubber thing or something. And Timmy's like, cool, I want that toy. Just, yeah, it's such a, and it's, it's a good, like, you know, there's, there's such great satire over like military stuff in this. And it's like, you know, he, he, you know, he, yeah, he's like, declare your allegiance civilian or something like that. And like two seconds, if that later, he shoots a kid in the head, you know, right, right in the forehead. And it's like, <laughs> you know, I, th I think this guy might be a little bit too under the, he, he is very certain that he's in like a war zone and like a civilian might be of, of, you know, an enemy in disguise or something. It is just, yeah. And, and it is, I, I think the film does a good job of having this thing of, these are things that would be so messed up if it were like actual, you know, people with, you know, a actual military people. But because they're, they're toys, the movie can push really far. I mean, imagine if that was like, if, if you saw a comedy that started with the, the military leader, bad guy, shooting a kid in the head. You know, even if it didn't kill the kid, that would be an incredibly messed up thing. And, and just the fact that right after that, the kid's like, oh, that's, that's a cool toy. Maybe that's why Timmy is so eager to rip, to to have Chip be be shot and be you know immediately this other guy is like you know promoted to leader. And I love the the you know Chip's face when it's like D what like it just he he is that you know does not compute what what is what is going on here. And Chip grabbed, I, I don't know what it's called, but some tool, and he was about to attack Archer with it. Both Alan and his parents, you know, you understand where they're coming from. You know, we learn later in the movie, Alan has done some things that would give his parents concerns. But at the same time, he feels like they're blowing those things out of proportion. And he has behaved himself for a while, and he doesn't feel like they're acknowledging that. I really feel the, the movie could very easily have had it come off as him just being a brat, which would have made it a very tough sit. If you don't like Alan in this movie, I mean, he's he's in so much of the movie. And, I mean, he does and says things that could be very frustrating. And I don't find them frustrating. I mean, it takes him a while before he takes Archer seriously at all, even though Archer... I mean, almost immediately starts talking about, you know, we're in danger. Me and my people are in danger. And Alan's like, shut up, I gotta do homework. You know, it's just, so, so if, yeah. And, and his parents also could come off, you know, on the VHS, before the movie starts, there's a trailer for the movie. I'm just going to go with Polly. It's about a talking parrot that's apparently called Polly. And Jay Moore has some role in it. I've never watched the movie, but he appears in the trailer. And he's he's like, you know, like like Paulie says, Oh, you're ugly or something like that. And he's like, What, you trained the you trained your parrot to insult people? And and then Paulie says, No, I could tell you're ugly on my own. That's yeah. So maybe there are some funny lines in it, I don't know. But the in that trailer, apparently the parents they're so certain that Paulie can't talk that when their like I don't know, six year old daughter tells them, they assume. I, mean, I I could imagine that there's like she she tries to get Paulie to talk and Paulie doesn't for some reason. But the yeah what it what it they they get rid of the parrot. Excuse me. They get rid of the parrot. And, and, you know, they're like, they're saying, I think she's having trouble telling reality and, and fantasy apart. And so they get rid of the parrot. And I, I mean, I guess you could understand where they're coming from. But it's just such, like, the kids watching it, you know, they're not going to, 
they're not going to see it that way. They're not going to be like, well, I guess if parents think that way, I guess I can see. They're going to be like, no, don't take the parrot. And and this movie could very easily have been that. And I will admit the the bit where they're like, you know, where the mother's like trying to figure out what drug he's on is, yeah, they didn't they didn't have to do that. But by and large, it is, yeah, it's it it works. You know, you you understand where they're coming from, and you understand where he's coming from, and it is like. Yeah, it's a very, very credible and yeah, a, you know, yeah, a lot of a lot of parents and and sons and daughters have that kind of relationship where you know the the kid is like, please have more faith in me, and the adult is like, you know, the the you know we have. To, I, I have to make sure that you don't get hurt, you know, and that, that things don't go wrong. And, you know, and especially, I mean, do we, do we find out how old Alan is? I mean, I would guess 13, 14, somewhere around there. Yeah, at that age, it, it very much feels like your parents are never going to let go of the mistakes you've made. And Alan realizes that Archer is intelligent. Chip saying there will be no mercy. And then the very mechanical blink is both funny and badass. And I think a lot of the movie really straddles that very, very nicely. And I, I noted a couple of other examples here. Uh, if I think of more as I do this video, I'll save them. Archer thinks that Alan's status is off since he's asleep. And the cat licks Archer's forehead, and Archer is so uncomfortable. I really like Gregory Smith, I think that's his name, in both this and Everwood. Chip's speech to the troops consists entirely of, like, movie references and military speech cliches, and possibly cliche, sorry, possibly references to other, like, non-fictional speeches but but yeah just the entire speech you know he goes on for maybe a minute or two and it's just non-stop like catchphrases and yeah christy so badly does not want to have to go home and tell her parents and timmy he can't get the toy if she does Timmy will not shut up about it, and even if Timmy only bugs their parents about it, Christy is definitely going to hear. Yeah. It's very sweet of her to, to help Alan. I mean, they really did just meet. Like, the, the day before was when they first met, and, like, all she'd heard about him was that he was a troublemaker. Although... Actually, I guess maybe that is part of it, that it, it is like, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we find out that she's, she's climbed out of her bedroom to leave the house a bunch of times before, and yeah. Let's see. And I think they're very sweet and cute together. And Alan's father immediately zeroes in on the mast of the ship having been broken. And Christy pretends like the toys are hers so that Alan won't get in trouble. And we see that the commando elite have stolen all the saws and such from the toy store. Brick Bazooka isn't entirely sure if the dog is or is not a Gorgonite, but its status is definitely hungry. Brick Bazooka near and on Alan's bike is also part badass and part funny. I mean, this, you know, this this little action figure, you know, first he's he's like launched through the air. I, I, yeah, I think they use like a like a what's what's it called like like the Dennis the Menace. I I forget what it's called, but yeah, I think you know what I'm talking about. To to launch him into the air. And then he's got like a little, you know, 
uh, what's what's it called? Like, uh, yeah, like he shoots it out, and there's a rope. It sticks onto the thing, and you can use that to to get up, you know. But then you've got this dog like trying to bite him as he's and and like there's a point where like is it is it the is one of the tires or the axis or something like grinds against his crotch, but then he's also like he almost gets all the way there, you know, before failing, and and I, he only fails because of a pothole actually. So he would have been able to get to the yeah. I really love them fixing or healing, however you want to put it, with bazooka, jamming his leg back in, twisting it. To the, again, I mean, this is this is like think about how dis disturbing that is. You know, think about how many war movies had someone actually lose a leg or at least a foot or something, and then imagine that. Losing the leg is not the end. No, no, they're just, they're gonna jam it back up there and like twist it back into place. And he's in, he's not like under any kind of sedation. He's just like, ah, oh, that hurt. And it's like, oh, that's kind of funny because it's toys. And then it's like, oh my God. Just the, the, the yeah. I really, I think this movie straddles that really well. And again, it could, yeah, it, it is. It is pretty disturbing. Like he's there, and he's like, you know, he he activates the, the 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 radio thing, but he's like, he is he is half the man he used to be. He is he is like a torso, and you've got the legs lying relatively close to him, but just yeah, you know, and and Chip actually shows, you know, he does care about his troops. You know, we will get you back in one piece, son, or some something like that. And he's also Clearly, when when Nick Nitro dies, that he clearly cares. Although then you also have him just like taking the head off, like and and the others like you know just horrified. And again, it's it's so messed up and it's so funny. Just to them, this is not a toy. To them, it's a person. Imagine if the guy in charge of your group just went up. And rip the head of one of your dead comrades and like off with the face and open and there the brain and let's stick that into just yeah it's because they don't think they're toys you know they're not like you know I mean yeah they do say okay insert tab A into slot B and twist to until you know but to them it's not like like Chip realizes that the standard issue guns are not, you know, they need to find like actual saws and like things that, you know, things that they can light on fires, you know, stuff like that. But other than that, they do actually think they they don't think, you know, oh, we're we're a bunch of action figures and we gotta defeat the other action figures and these humans keep getting in the way. No, no, no they to them, they don't see a difference between the Gorgonites. And human beings, you know, except I, f I forget which one, but one of them, you know, scans like Phil's head and designates him a moron. So clearly they have a certain level of distinction between, you know, but by and large, it's just to them, this is completely, yeah, this is, this is life or death. You know, I mean, Alan feels, a, you know, he has, he has empathy for Archer. But he doesn't actually think that, like, I mean, you know, clearly they can feel pain. That is a, a thing, but, I mean, he doesn't, if, like, hypothetically, let's say that he could only save one. He could save a, a human being, or he could save one of the Gorgonites. I mean, yeah, he would, he would save the human being, or he tried to do the superhero thing of not making the choice, even though that was the point of the picture. But the, yeah, to, to them, it's, it's completely, which also makes their, you know, like, yeah, yeah, thing, they, they don't torture, them, them torturing Christy, to them, that's not that different from torturing Archer, you know, clearly, they, they understand that they can torture human beings as well as they can torture Gorgonites, but they don't especially... They they torture Christy because 
she means more to Anon than, like, a, yeah, again, than the Gorgonites do, but that's, oh, they, yeah, but actually at that point they lost access to the one Gorgonite they could, and Christy does not yet know to be wary of the, of, of the commander elite, so. Ma'am? I'm not a ma'am. I'm a boy. I mean, a man. I, I do really like the, you know, she's such, it's such a cliche, just, you know, she's, she's just barely listening to what he's saying, but just, you know, we do not replace, bro you know, what was it, broken toys or something. They didn't break them, they destroyed them, just, yeah. And Archer really does not shut up for, like, I guess, ultimately, it's not that many minutes of the movie, but it is, I, you, you understand why Alan gets really frustrated. Meanwhile, it does make sense that he's worried about his kin, even, and I, I love that, you know, Al, Alan says, like, shut up, and he, you know, when, when he's saying something, and then he closes his mouth, and he's, he opens his mouth, and Alan just says, not a word, just, yeah, I, I love a good sight gag. And Larry can't figure out if counterfeit is one word or two words. And will not shut up about it. I, I love the whole... Yeah, let me, let me see if I can recreate it. Everything in those toys is standard. The... You know the standard? That's, even the... Oh. Oh? What's O? Oh? Oh, I don't know, nothing. What, what's the O? I was just I was like oh yeah but is that oh like oh that's interesting or oh like oh we're screwed see I, just that is they they legitimately give good performances there it helps that the writing is good as well but good trap imitating the voices of the Gorgonites great voiceover work and use of sound effects throughout the movie. The commandos sound so threatening when they're torturing Archer, but then the moment we actually see them, you know, all Alan does is turn on the light, and, like, all of them run off. Like, the only one that stays behind is Nick Nitro, and he's so easily defeated also. But, but yeah, you know, just their, their voices and the things they say sound so threatening, and then he flips on the light, and you see just there's a bunch of toys standing around, us, us, you know, and, like, when when we see Archer, like, slowly descend, you know, because Brick Bazooka's like, uh, he's like, oh, crap, and he runs off, and the thing just keeps going, so Archer is, like, going closer and closer, and, and the, what's it called, the, the, what are they called, food, dis yeah, the, the thing, you know, is, is, like, running, and yeah, if the way it's shot and edited, it feels like oh, it's your mortal danger. And, and technically, it's Archer. It is because he does have a mind, you know. But then just Alan like picks him up and it, oh oh okay. I mean, it's it's a little bit like in in Ant Man when you know the the train comes up and he's like ah, and then it just falls over and and nothing really ha you know because it's not it's not a train. It doesn't have like this huge. It's not this huge mass of steel, you know, it's, it's, it's a toy train, it's made of wood, you know. Let's see. And the, yeah, I, I quite like the, you know, yeah, Nick, Nick Nitro goes up, you know, take this Gorgonite ally, and he, like, he cuts, like, I think it's around here, part of, part of Alan's, you know, and then he just takes the, the thing out of his hand because, it's, it's, you know, Nick Nitro, determined though he might be, he does not have the muscle to, to hold on to that thing if Alan just picks it up to, and then he's like, flicks on like a, a little, you know, and, and to him it's like basically a, a torch, like a, like a, what's it called? The, the, 
match, you know, flicks on the match, and it's like, you know, and, and Alan just blows it out. Does Alan genuinely believe that Dick Miller would have his legs broken? Because he sounds very sincere when he says it. And the Commando Elite find all of Phil's tools. Dibs on the chainsaw. And they laughs. Just, yeah, really, really cool. Let's see. I'm hiding because I'm a loser. I have no self esteem. My brain is the size of a pin. Hey, listen, man. Robert Picardo playing overconfident is always fun. Even Slamfist knows wrestling isn't real. They changed the channel and you've got the, the big eye thing. Friend of yours? That thing can look at the hell out of you. Not so close, you'll ruin your eye. And Link Static monitors the the cell you know, sorry, the phones and realizes, you know, Alan and Christy are flirting with each other. Rick Bazooka's wrist is still broken from the bike accident. Again, this is, this is, that's a horrifying thing, you know. I mean, in, you know, a movie like Deadpool can make that funny, but that's, that's genuinely, that's, yeah, like, he's, you know, he's, he's trying to do a salute, and it, and that's, wow. What was that other movie that I did a video on where it's also like someone raising and then like someone trying to raise their hand to say I do and then like huh maybe I'll remember later I love that I think she's called Marin Phil's wife is like what a great picture it's perfect and then Phil's like I don't know. It's a little blurry, and she's just like, oh, God, no. Here he goes. I mean, <laughs> she looks like he, I mean, the, the you know, in, in her mind, he might as well have, like, you know, I don't know, bro broken open the, the sink because he's sure he can fix the pipe by himself or something. Like, it's just... Oh God, no! Please make this stop. You know, just <laughs> she's she's been dreading this exact moment since the moment that he got this new satellite dish, and just oh, please make him shut up. Please just sit down and watch the TV. You know, it's not it's not a big deal. It, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Chip Hazard identifies Phil as a moron. Planet Terror, that's it, with the with the broken wrist. She's trying to raise her hand and he goes See, movies movies like Planet Terror and Deadpool can have this kind of morbid humor. I mean this I think it's like a PG thirteen. It, it's in this here you can watch it, you know, it says like age eleven. So which is the closest I, we have a eleven and then fifteen. I'm pretty sure we don't have anything in between, so it's essentially the PG-13 rating. But but a guy breaks his wrist and it's played for laughs. You know, in a movie that, you know, if you're 11 years old, sure, that's fine. You know, if, wow. But, but yeah, you know, if, if Brick Bazooka had both of his wrists broken, he could, you know, all the dinosaurs fear the T-Rex. I think World War II is my favorite war. You know, I think a lot of people feel that way. When Timmy pretends that Chip Hazard gets killed and a different soldier is made the leader, Chip immediately orders the attack. He's like, you know, okay, hold hold your fire when, when Timmy just walks in. You know, like, okay, let's let's assess the situation and then it's like, okay, this guy's going down. <laughs> They really did film the Gwendy dolls like they're actual, like, live women, you know, attractive women. It, it's being filmed 
with with the the exact kind of of angle and you know it plays the it, is it saxophone music i want to say it's saxophone music and like slow pan up the legs you know just i mean these are after all essentially pov shots from the commando elite and to them that's what these dolls actually are you know it's not not technically completely pov shots but the yeah we're we're seeing it it is essentially their perspective excuse me i'm just gonna make sure that the yeah it's gonna reboot in about 10 minutes if i don't tell it not to four hours postpone there we go and it's still saying yeah continues to warn me about drop frames well, let's see if we can get this sucker nope I think that'll do. That'll do, Katie. That'll do. I love the sequence of them bringing the Gwendy dolls to life. I love Christy walking into Frankenstein's lab. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. Did I overpluck my eyebrows? And there's the, there was one other that I don't think I got noted, but the we'll all get facials. And and like, you know, her her face is like partially melted into itself and the eyes are hanging out. It's, it's this grotesque body horror. And then you have you know, that kind of line to, to punctuate the yeah. I mean, this is something that would be really creepy and scary without any line. But then when you put that line in there, it becomes this sort of like, yeah, actually, I guess Adam's family is is kind of a good, it, it is this thing where like to them, this is, ah, oh, you know, great. Just, you know, let's, yeah, so, such a, such a happy occasion, you know. And because it's, you know, by, by society standards, it's incredibly creepy. It gets that exact sort of. Are there more movies like that? I want. I want to watch more movies like that. I love both of the nineties. The the two with with the. Was it Barry Barry Levinson? I think I accidentally like when I did the video on Spear. Was that a week ago? I guess a week ago. I think I accidentally confused Barry Levinson. Or the Barry who directed Sphere. I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with the rest of his work, but yeah, Barry Levinson. I want to say is the one who directed the. Or do I have it backwards? And anyway, yeah, the the two where it's well for sure it's Christina Ricci as Wednesday. I there there's at least one where what's his face are the the. Hmm. The guy who plays the devil in legend, among other things, or the darkness, I think they just call it. Arthur something. Who? Arthur Curry? No, wait, that's that's Aquaman's real name, isn't it? Anyway, the the whatever the yeah. He plays Gomez Adams in one of them. That one's not very good, and it's not his fault. He he gives it a, a good try, you know. It's it's the writing and and tone of the, and actually I think the the Wednesday from from what I recall I think she did a pretty decent job as well but the yeah and I mean the trailer I don't I don't I'm not good at judging animation so I'm not gonna get too much in but it does I haven't seen Chloe Grace Moretz in very much but. If I recall, she did well in Dark Shadows, so yeah, and and I think she did a good performance in the the trailer where we briefly see her, where where she does the voice for Wednesday Adams, and yeah, I you know, not sure I'm gonna watch it because I'm not, I, excuse me, I don't do animation, but it is a, 
it it looks like it it might be fun and i i mean it is it makes a lot of sense to use animation for the adams family stuff you know the moment that you do live action it is going to put some limitation on but i i do also think the the interplay between the exaggeration of the adams family with the, you know the, them constantly trying to kill each other and themselves for example you know the the throwaway there isn't he a lady killer acquitted you know th that and then live in in a live action setting that's incredibly funny but which is also part of why i love this movie you know the live action setting and then you have action figures come to life and try to murder each other you know such a great sequence when they capture and terrify christy I love the the rock music, and I guess it's actually playing in the scene because when it cuts out to her boyfriend, who's you know walking back and forth trying to come up with lines for why you know she should let him in, the the yeah you know the music is still playing, but it's not a quite the same volume. So I don't know is is the idea that they're playing loud rock music well i mean that could cover up the screams maybe i'm told i'm told the gwendy dolls literally launch themselves at the first real man they see i i love it it's so and and they're like and then you know that that haircut is so five minutes ago while they're like just yeah it's it's like i was gonna say clawing at his face well yeah yeah they're they're like they point like a Maybe not at his face, but at some, is it maybe at Alan? At this, someone gets like a, a, you know, little, I, I guess it's probably just like a, uh, what's it called? Hmm. N nail file or something. Yeah, whatever. Pointed at, at like their, their face or their eye or something. And then they're talking about, you know, Will you take me to the prom? And yeah, all this. I agree that, you know. Yeah. Anyway, Brad, I want to say his name is. I agree that Brad is not a bad boyfriend to Christy for being scared off by a f taking a flamethrower to his foot. But he also does not appear to call the police. I mean, he doesn't have to say that it's toys. He can say, people are in my girlfriend's house and they attack me with fire or something you know obviously if he said that the problem is you know toys they wouldn't take him seriously which is also what you know that's the problem that christy experiences and it is why did she go what what made her think that they would take that seriously although you know no it is a prank you'll send someone to arrest me right and then they you know they hang up or something but yeah just i mean yeah, I, I I guess at that point she's been to her. It's just that's the new reality. Toys, toys are walking and talking. They're they're tying me up, attacking me with with sharp objects. You know, yeah. It. it... What else is on? Well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> this... That's what that's what he says after the hostage video. Wow. Again, just this is this is this is not okay, and I love it. Just who says that after a hostage video? I mean, again, they might not distinguish between like Gorgonite and human, but that still means that's a human being. You know. A, Okay, you're not in love with her, but Alan is, and even if he wasn't, it's still a human being being tortured, you know, tied up and clearly in distress. And it's just like, I mean, it would be one thing if he said, I think you should go alone. You have a better chance without us dragging you down. But no, he just says, what else is on? Are we sure that the Gorgonites are not monsters? I mean, maybe just that one. It's so fun to see Christy destroy the Gwendy dolls, and she has so much fun with it, too. 
and Christy kissing Alan is very sweet. Does anybody have a garage door opener and they just blow a hole in the garage door and the song War plays and they chase and shoot at Alan and Christy? Just, yeah. Did they? It's like a, it's like a bunch of, what's it called? Skateboards all outfitted with like sharp objects or, or like, you know, nail guns and stuff. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's not difficult to find a bunch of skateboards. Clearly, teenagers live in these, I mean, they can't, they can't, those can't all be from, like, I, I don't think either Christy or Timmy would have skateboards, or, or Phil. Would Alan have that many? I don't know. But I mean, if they've been, like, going around, breaking into garages, and, like, you know, it's not that difficult to get a skateboard a relatively short distance. Yeah, there are probably a lot of kids with skateboards in that neighborhood. And Brick Bazooka did get the chainsaw, you know, he and he's attacking the scooter and... With, yeah, and the chainsaw, yeah, it's, it's like mounted on top of the thing, and he's like, uh, you know, loving this, yeah. You know, again, keep in mind, these are, these are toys. That's what they are. But they're trying to murder two human beings. And, I mean, they, they, you know, really the, the thing that goes wrong for them is the the like the 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 what's it called the the jump you know they can't quite make the jump if not for that jump i think there's a decent chance that eventually i mean they're they're keeping up pretty decently and yeah i mean if that chainsaw actually got to the tire and and christy and alan are driving at that speed they could, yeah, you know, they could go flying through the air. If they land hard, they might get so hurt that the Commando Elite would catch up to them. And kill them, maybe? I guess? I mean, they're considering them Gorgonite allies. They, they, yeah, and, and like, afterwards, they say, you know, there are 16 enemies, and, you know, Seven Gorgonites and nine people. Yeah, it's it's like they they literally are going to try to and and they could because they've got sharp objects, you know. They've got a chainsaw. There's some chance that if this that that if you know, I mean, they were gonna stuff food disposal. That's what it's called, right? Disposal, whatever. They were gonna stuff Archer. Base first into garbage disposal. It's called a disposal. I'm fairly certain. Eventually, we're going to get there. We're going to get there together. In order to get him to confess where the other Gorgonites were, and Chip just said, you know what? Forget it. Just stuff him down there. You know, that's not an exact quote, but that's basically what he said. He was like, this is taking too long. Let's just, let's just cut the again this is if this movie th it's possible that it would not be able to get away with an R rating it's possible that it would get an NC-17 because a living you know a living individual almost has his head stuffed inside a disposal that is already running like if that just yeah, there's, there's some chance that they would take that chainsaw to various parts of Christian Allen's bodies. And it's at this point that I do hope no kids are watching this video. But that, I mean, you probably shouldn't be, but I kind of do love... I mean, this is the movie that kids could get, you know, please, Dad, look, it says PG-13. It's just toys. You know, and then you're sitting there in the theater... Uh, you know, just uh, yeah. You know, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna get to to watch the 
you know, Joe, like I said, Joe Dante also directed the the uh, part of the one of one of the stories for the Twilight Zone movie, which is I've heard people say very bad things about it. It's not bad. It's just maybe not as good as the episodes of the show that it's doing. You know, it's redoing episodes of the show. It's doing those same stories, and yeah, I mean, it's it's difficult to. I haven't watched a lot of Twilight Zone, but what I watched, I really loved. It was a very good show. I'm talking about the the '60s one, I barely watched any from the the. Are there are there more ones too? I forget, but yeah. The the anyway. His segment, it was, it was, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good movie, and it's, yeah. Anyway, the, yeah, right. So, so the, what was the, the, yeah. So the, the, yeah, you know, kids. The fact that Joe Dante directed that segment, excuse me, does not mean. That the kids are gonna convince their parents to take them to the Twilight Zone movie, but they could, you know, they could maybe talk their parents into this movie because you know, and look at the the trailer. It's kind of, you know, it it doesn't look that horrifying on a basic. This movie has body horror played for laughs. It has people, you know, Nick Nitro does get stuff down the disposal. And then he, like, crawls out, like, half dead, and he goes, you know, and, and you know, I, th I think he said, mission failed, sir, I'm sorry. And Chip is like, it's, it's okay, son, you, you fought hard. Did we win? And then, like, his mouth opens and his face just freezes, and, and like, there's this sound of his soul dying. And the and the like, I, I'm pretty sure that is exactly the sound that that like, you know, that's 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 your that's 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 the innocence of 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 a kid watching this movie just dying as it just stares in disbelief as just watching a toy die in in such a you know it didn't have to be disturbing but it is. It's it's so so messed up, and and again then you know he he plops the head right out of the socket, and the others are like oh my god what is he doing? Just yeah, I love this movie. Now yeah, so the commando elite can't make the jump that the scooter can, and they blow up, but Chip survives. You know. It makes sense that they don't stay behind, confirm the kill, because it's kind of disturbing. I mean, you, again, there's a fire. They didn't all die from the explosion. Some of them are burning to death. And Alan and Christy leave. They're like, our enemies are burning to a fiery, extremely painful death. I don't feel like watching this. Let's leave. Like they don't put them out and then like disable them and send them back to the the factory. No, they just they know. Oh, okay, they're they're definitely burning to death. I can hear them crying for mercy. Well, I guess we solved that problem. Just <laughs> I mean, I've I've seen movies that are a hard R that aren't as that you know, where where it's not as messed up the, the the violence as it is here and Marion is totally stoned from the sleeping pills and gin and tonic and this is again I mean the, the kids maybe don't understand they're just like oh, she's talking funny but like she's literally she was drugged and now she's just like she can just barely focus on what's going on and just yeah Phil drank from her from her alcoholic beverage. Is that normal? Is that a thing married couples do? I mean, I'm not saying like, oh, you know, cooties or whatever, because obviously, you know, 
they share so many things. It's not, but I don't know. Isn't that a little weird of a thing to do? Just drink from from your partner's drink. I don't know. Larry was being a smug bastard. No wonder Alan's dad slugged him. See, that's that's the the Jay Moore that I love. Is when he's like really smug and just yeah. On on the show action, he doesn't get slugged, but he probably should be. He just and and he just he has the perfect face. He had when when he smiles in a smug way, it really is just oh man, someone's gonna punch that guy. And he's and and it's gonna be completely it's gonna be the exact right course of action. He deserves it. That is a lot of commando elites. It's okay, sweetie. They just want to kill the little monster people. 16. Where did they get 16? Seven Gorgonites and nine people. I think also the, you know, we have by now passed when, when Irwin, real, you know, he's like, you know, he realizes making, you're making declarative statements, posing questions, you know, like they are super intelligent and that is what, you know, yeah. They're, they're learning, you know, they're not talking about violence and, you know, completing the mission and such, but they were programmed to learn and to be interested in things, to explore, and so, yeah. And, yeah, and he's like, oh, that's where they are, and he's like, everybody's got to be, like, you must be going somewhere. Okay. Where's he headed? Nowhere. Just to, to make sure you get the reference. Because they realize it's made too vague. We are the Commando Elite. Everything else is just a toy. And then they play Spice Girls really loudly. I love that. That's It's such a great smash cut. Just, again, just the, the contrary. They, they're going to kill these people. You know, what was it? Seven Gorgon? Nine people. They are going to murder nine people. They're not, this is not a fair fight, and they know that. They're going to kill nine civilians because they have allied with their enemy. And they're going to do this by firing nine-inch nails, flaming tennis balls, and just, and then, and then they play Spice Girls really loud. They just, it's such, like, I, I love it. I love the, the, the contrast and the balance this and then you know and it, it plays and it's why are they playing that psychological warfare they used in noriega you know and the 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 what's it called yeah and and you know for i i i don't i'm i'm very happy to say i do not remember the the names of the various spice girls songs but i'm pretty sure they're on at least song number two i'm pretty sure they they start playing one, and then they're playing another. And on on the second one, you know, they're sitting there, you know, it's so loud. And then Marion's like, "Phil, Phil, I love this song." <laughs> and all the neighbors assume Phil is just playing music really loudly. And based on how he acted about the satellite dish and the tree branch earlier, if they called the cops. It would just be pr pr trouble for themselves, so they're just, ugh, I hope he stops soon. You know, eventually he's going to tire of it. Just, yeah. Alan's mother really takes charge of the situation, and smartly decides that Marion and Timmy should just hide instead of trying to help. But that is, I mean, she... she we don't we don't see it a lot, but she is like this smart driven like business person, isn't she? That is the idea of like I'm not even sure do we know exactly what her job is? I mean, Alan's dad used to be used to you know, they used to live in the city. Now they live in the suburbs and like it was really stressful for them. I mean, it's stressful to live in the city, but they probably had stressful jobs. It might have been working in some kind of like office building or something, and now Alan's going to run a toy store because that's not very stressful. Until, you know, some of your customers happen to be kids, of course. But 
she's like she is on point like you know she yeah she she gives everybody jobs to do and there there are jobs that make sense to do and the people she assigns to the jobs also make sense you know and and she calls Irwin 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 and Larry she calls nerds you know yeah yeah they're like they're working on electronic stuff I think makes sense although Irwin turns out to be he keeps messing it up but yeah you know he doesn't send Timmy to work on the electronics we have to stop them before my wife gets tennis elbow they're launching fireballs they're trying to set you and your house on fire and you're worried you know I mean I mean to be fair if she gets tennis elbow she will no longer be able to you know the I, uh, yeah, I forget what the tennis term is for the lopping. I guess she will no longer be able to lop back the fireballs. But it's still a really it's a it's a funny way to to put that. It only happened once, and Alan convinces his father to trust him. And right of the Valkyrie's place, as Chip flies a helicopter. And the Gorgonites fight and help out with the battle. And I like how, I mean, yeah, he is essentially like Quasimodo. And he's, you know, Sl Slam Fist, I want to say his name is. I, I got to admit, I don't know the names of all the different ones. Only, only like the, the, you know, I could I could tell you the, the you know, the, yeah. Like, I know by voice and appearance, characters like Archer, The the fast talking one that spins. Chip Hazard, Nick Nitro, Rick Bazooka, and Link Static. But the others, yeah, I I couldn't. But I do love the the cast of the anyway. Yeah, Slam Fist is essentially you know Quasimodo, and he's swinging back and forth. Side to army. And, and the Frankenstein Gorgonite just mows down Commando Elites. I think he's got like a like a nail gun or something like that. I really love this climax. It's so much fun. And unlike some other, you know, kids movies that have like a big action climax, in this movie you're not just sitting around waiting for the climax to eventually get there it's genuinely fun and there's genuinely there's action throughout the entire thing you know the yeah i mean i guess you could say the first 20 or 30 minutes are mostly build up but after that you do get a, a good amount of of action yeah. and chip flies up to alan and Frankenstein, I think he's actually called like Frankenstein or something, but the the voice typing can only get some, you know, there's a limit to how weird words it'll get, right? But yeah, Frank, Frankenstein damages the helicopter, so Chip has to jump out. I really love Archer getting up to Alan and Chip with the, you know, he fires the, the crossbow and it's got like a long line to you know and and the yeah the the other one spins really fast and it's yeah and and the fight between archer and ship archer really does try to you know he stands and he fights he doesn't excuse me he doesn't win but then i mean ultimately Alan is the protagonist, you know, so of course he's going to be the, the one, and you know, have I got a shot for you? <laughs> and Christy uses an uh, electronic lawnmower to wipe out a bunch of commando elite and Gwimpy dolls. Let's see, and, and again, you know, I think, I mean, there's a chance that they, that some of the Gwimpies just were not in the around when when the other fight you know but it's also possible they found them in 
some other place. And yeah, some of the, there might have been Wendy's near the is not on the same story truck, maybe not, but anyhow. You know, yeah, it's it's a suburban neighbor neighborhood. Teen girls are gonna have Wendy dolls, you know. Irwin keeps making mistakes with the electricity. You know, it's like, this is, you know what you're doing? Of course it will, you know. Is this dangerous? No, not as long as you just, Some of the deaths of the Commando Elite are funny, and some of them are disturbing. Let's see. And... Yeah, and here I noted to make sure to save out, you know, Nick Nitro's head. But I, yeah, I already... Described it. She doesn't have a lot of screen time. But Miss Cagle is such a great assistant to, you know, Gil Mars, who also makes a strong impression with very little screen time. It's Danny Sears, of course he does. Let's see. I mean, he might have... I guess, I guess he has more screen time in this than he does in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. But it's not just, you know, anyway, I'm joking, of course. And his helicopter, like, helicopter lands and, like, squishes a, a robot head under it, similar to, like, Terminator 1 and 2, where, you know, yeah, like a, a robot, either, like, in, in the second one, it's a, the, the foot of one of the T-800 skeletons, and in the first one, it's the tank tread, you know, crushing and, and it's human skulls and of course here's going to be well, there are a lot of things about the commando elites and, and the gorgonites that you know they could essentially be human beings dad about my birthday i just want clothes but it's good idea sweetheart now the movie's 100 minutes without any credits and 105 with and i think it's sweet that they dedicated you know, to, to fill at the end. For Phil. Phil Hartman. And moving on to MDB Wikipedia and Critics Sites. Now, let's see. Excuse me. Now, let's see. Let's see. Now, the Rotten Tomatoes, um, yeah, the, the critics' consensus, Small Soldiers has plenty of visual razzle-dazzle, but the rote story proves disappointingly deficient in director Joe Dante's trademark anarchic spirit. I mean, I guess it is kind of... Wasn't the first Gremlins movie also a fairly... I don't know, maybe, maybe... I, just, I guess, actually, I didn't think to look that one up. Maybe the critics also weren't that kind to that one. It's, it's been way too long to, for me to say if they're, they're good movies. I, I do remember a lot of the gags from the second one. Where then, you know, yeah, I mean, they, they wanted to create a bunch of, of new ones. And I mean, I do think that the, the one that's genuine, like really intelligent and talking, and then it turns around and does something really violent to one of the other ones. It's just, I don't know. I mean, 
it's it's probably the second one's probably not particularly good movie, but I there are things about it that I can't help but at least respect. But yeah, it has a 48% on the tomato meter, 44 reviews counted, and 23 of them are rotten. An average rating of 6.19 out of 10. An audience score of 44% also, 2.8 out of 5. That's the average rating. Now, I guess... Yeah, let me just... And yeah, so this just gotta make sure that it rests in the right place. And let's see. So Right, so this review says, typical of Dante's films, Small Soldiers is an unbroken string of pop culture in-jokes. And, yeah, and I, I think it works quite well. And this guy gave a 3 out of 4, so he must have thought that it worked well as well. And again, it's, I, I don't remember Gremlins. I mean, one thing, and maybe this is part of the appeal and I, I totally do understand they couldn't have made you know but not having grown up on gremlins you know I watched them when I was like a teenager and when I was a teenager it was the 90s so there were some very fast-paced movies the first gremlins is not that fast-paced or that big of a movie so I don't remember it that much. It didn't make that strong of an impression on me. Maybe if I watched it today, it would. But, yeah. I watched this and Gremlins around the same time, and this appealed to me more, you know. I, I do respect that Gremlins, I mean, it took Nads to go for that, and it does, it goes for it. that bit where, like, Phoebe Case, I want to say, plays the role, just, I'm not going to spoil it for people who haven't watched that movie, but when she talks about what Christmas means to her and why, I did not see that coming when I first watched it, and it's like, yeah, I mean, that, that, yeah. Let's see. It looks like the movie was edited down from a much meaner version to our loss. And yeah, unfortunately, probably. I, I still think that it's incredible. But I, I mean, as far as I know, it hasn't happened. I mean, it, yeah. I looked at IMDb. It would probably have said there's like a... There are a couple of deleted scenes, but other than that, like there isn't a director's cut version or an unrated DVD version of this movie. I think that would be all. Like if if at some point, I I I have no idea. I I forgot. I I looked, but I forgot if this made a lot of money. I can imagine that it might not have, but yeah, like if if someday. I feel like I, I saw that he, Joe Dante was working on something right now, but anyway, if there's like a while where he's not doing a new thing, if they would let him, if he got to sit down and redo, I mean, you can dub over a bunch of lines, and, you know, and if, if they still have footage that they were going to use, if they still have that, and they could, they could process it and put it you know, edit it in, I would love to see that. I would, I would buy that. I would really, yeah, I would be so into that. Now, let's see. The animation is excellent, and the voice cast alone is worth the price of admission. And I would have to agree. Just, yeah, the, the, 
and and it's actually I didn't always appreciate I didn't always know all of the I mean of course I knew Tommy Lee Jones you know Men in Black if nothing else I watched when I was a teenager so but yeah a bunch of them I didn't know and and this time I really recognized Bruce Dern as Link Static but yeah and and Ernest Borgnine but the yeah. Let's see. Now, the Toy Story 1 animation, you know, unfortunately, they did push it past what was convincing. And I, yeah, they did so with this movie, too. I'm, it's, this, this was, I'm, I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying Toy Story 1 is a bad movie. It just yeah, wasn't really for me, you know. I've always, I really don't understand why they make the Sid, I want to say, out to be a bad guy. Because he doesn't know that the toys are, that Sid, he, he thinks that he's just doing this to inanimate objects. I think the real evil thing is to keep hidden from him that they're alive. You know, they should have made it clear. Because, yeah, to the kids watching the movie, he's torturing living beings. But he doesn't know that. I just, yeah, I, I, I hate when movies that have, like, a moral or a message present something as bad that really isn't bad. I, I, I could imagine that there are probably kids who bullied other kids for, yeah, Okay, so he breaks his toys. They're his toys. It's not like he's doing this to other kids' toys. Just, yeah, I, I hate it. Look, I had toys where, like, I had, like, a, like, a, I had a Turtles character. Where his hand could basically fit around, like, a sword, I think, from a different toy. But there was like, I think there was like a thing at the, at the, like if you have the, the handle here, a thing down here that prevented from, from, because you couldn't push it in between the, you had to push it, slide it down. So I cut off the end. So it was a better toy. You know, it's not, and, and I would, I taped stuff to some of the toys I remember. Just, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, besides, it's clearly, you know, if yeah, maybe you think that he is kind of extreme with that. He's clearly got some family issues, you know. So, yeah, just again, so he's the bad guy for being mistreated by others and, you know, finding a creative outlet for that. This is not about that. I think I think one of the crack guys pointed out he's yeah he's being creative. Now, okay, let's see. Yeah, so this one critic says this smells like a script slapped around slapped together around a toy product launch. Hmm. I guess maybe he's saying something like like the other guy said. Excuse me, that the story was wrote. Excuse me, and this guy says the script slapped together. Hmm. I, I mean, I guess maybe it's a little. I don't know. I, I don't really. I don't really know what they. I haven't read the entire review, so it's possible they do this, but I. And I realize not every, you know, a lot of reviewers don't have the space to. But I, for some of these, I really want the reviewers to give examples of what they mean. Because for some of the, I, and I think some other people also just feel like, well, you know, you see a lot of people just say, ah, the critics just, they don't like anything. It's not that they don't like anything, but a lot of popular things they find problems with a lot of people don't like it when they're told that there's problems with something they like so but but yeah i mean i don't know i don't know what would be a really 
a, a script that wasn't wrote or a what was it the consensus that says wrote anyway or a script that doesn't feel slapped together i i don't the the movie didn't it didn't feel like like it's not it's not slow i didn't see the various things coming like if i was watching this for the first time today i don't i wouldn't have seen all of the the various you know yeah the the different things come like for example there is no way that i would have guessed the the whole wendy doll thing i would not have been able to guess that at all and again yeah the first time i watched this i think i had already watched gremlins and i knew i'm certain that i knew either when i watched this or when i watched gremlins that he did that he directed both of these movies i distinctly remember knowing that so yeah i mean i guess the it was a <sighs> hmm right right so yeah i i wouldn't have seen that coming i mean when you when you know that he the the you know gremlins also has like unpredictable unpredicted both i mean the kind of really dark sudden stuff but yeah i i would not i i i mean it's it's i think a little bit of it is in the trailer but other than that you can't tell me that you saw coming that a bunch of barbie dolls were going to be turned into like you know frankenstein's monster kind of just yeah, see, that's that. I I don't know. I mean, I I feel like there are a lot of surprises in it. I also don't know about the toy. I never. I'm almost certain you can buy them around here. If in 1998, I would definitely have. I would definitely have bought at least some of them. When you know, and I watched it when I was relatively new. No, no, I'm almost certain that there are no toys here at least. So, that maybe also affects like, yeah. If, I mean, there are definitely, there are definitely things like that. There are definitely, you know, like, movies that were clearly just made to pr promote something. And games that were made to promote something. Now, let's see. Though it starts promisingly, the picture ends is a standoff between the affection of Dante and his company bring to the project and it's increasingly frenetic and tiresome emphasis on what special effects can make its little people do. See again, I just I don't see that. I really don't feel like the movie has very many shots that are just like effects. Like I mean I or maybe it's just that I consider them character moments. Like, it's not like anyone in the movie ever just does a thing. It always goes along with their character. And I don't feel like... that they, they push it too far, but I don't really feel like there's much of anything where they just have, you know, show off something that they think looks amazing that doesn't... Yeah. I don't know. I think on, on some of these things, also just my standards are not the same as those of critics let's see as with many films in which special effects are the real stars see again i don't know anyway i mean they they clearly like there are movies that i want to say i forget if i actually watched it myself or not, but i only watched the nostalgia critics review of it and obviously doing the latter is not it's it's hard to judge a movie based on one of his reviews but the haunting i want to say and i'm not just saying this because i love the original and they certainly appear to have butchered it but i feel if yeah if i recall there's at least one effect in that movie that's just like look what we can do now you know look how far we can push this and I just don't feel like there's anything like that in this. 
Anyway, as with many films in which special effects are the stars, the technology here commands more respect and interest than the material otherwise warrants. Again, I hugely disagree. See, if I had, if this movie had been made in the eighties, if this, excuse me, if this movie was made entirely with puppetry and such, yeah, I would still love it. Anyway. Fortunately, it's possible to ignore the morals entirely and simply enjoy the filmmaker's skill of creating carefully contained mayhem in a microcosm. What morals is he talking about? Like, the movie has some really dark messages, such as money supposedly fixing everything, rich people getting away with people getting hurt, and they don't even care. Clearly, we're not supposed to take those to heart. So I, I don't know what morals he's talking about. I mean, it would be one. There, there are movies that don't even, you know, that that don't try to have it. But this clearly does. Like this movie is clearly, yeah. Like the the near the end, you know, you have all these characters who are like, you can't possibly buy me up with money. You, you know, you have you have three of them, and the fact that Hill does, it's not a huge surprise. You know, he's gonna buy a new satellite dish with some of that money. But both Dick Miller and Alan's parents are completely happy with it. You know, they're, they're, yeah. The, the movie plays that straight. Obviously, we're not supposed to take them. They don't expect kids to actually, you know, like, it's probably like a real headache for the parents. You know, the, the parents probably are like, oh, God, I can't believe the movie just said, okay, sweetie. Money doesn't make everything okay. You know, they, they probably have to spend hours, you know, deprogramming the kid from, from that mess. It's it's a joke. It's not supposed to anyway. Let's see. And Roger Ebert said, What bothered me most about Small Soldiers is that it didn't tell me where to stand, what attitude to adopt. See, sometimes I just really disagree with Ebert. I I don't know. Again, I don't really, I don't really know what them, I mean, I mean, obviously the human, the, the viewer is supposed to sympathize with the humans and the Gorgonites and feel that the, the military, I mean, it is essentially like, you know, if, if it was, if you were to try to pick some kind of message out of the way it, it treats, you know, the, the, yeah, it's, it's saying that if unchecked, if you just go, you know, full speed ahead, military leads to, you know, a lot of collateral damage leads to people getting hurt who have nothing to do with the conflict. And I mean, the yeah, at the end of the day, the commando elites, gen they never stop and question. You never see a single one of them stop and say, why are we killing the Gorgonites? They never question their mission. So there's some criticism of military and military thinking there, you might say, but... Other than that, I don't really know what the, yeah, the, the, and I mean, yeah, that might be a, it's, you know, given that it, ta it, it, apparently like some of the, what's it called, the, the personalities and appearances and such of the commando elite are, you know, based on G.I. Joe figures, and there was a G.I. Joe cartoon. So maybe it's saying, you know, watch out for, you know, really aggressive military kind of thinking in children's entertainment. I don't know. I watched the first of the movies. It sucked, but I mean, I, th I, I think I do maintain that movie sucks. But I think a lot of the movies of uh, Stephen Sommers, not Stephen Millington, who directed Blade One and The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, 
Steve Sommer's movies are not really for me in general. I mean, I watched the first two Mummy movies, and I watched The Scorpion King 1. I like The Scorpion King 1 so much better than the, the first two Mummy 3. Oh my god, I watched... Are there more than three? I didn't watch the new one with Tom Cruise. Whatever. I watched all three. To be fair, Steven Sommers can't be blamed for the last one. That one was... Rob Cohen. That was Rob Cohen, wasn't it? They got the triple X guy to direct a mummy movie. Wow. Anyway. Yeah. The... the I mean, maybe part of that is that The Rock is really charming. In, I've, I've seen him in very, almost nothing, but he's charming in The Scorpion King as The Scorpion King. And he's charming... Let's see, he was, he was on Voyager? I forget what else I've seen him in, but there's something. I forget what. G.I. Joe goes ballistic in Dante's smart, witty hybrid of Toy Story and his own gremlins. I think, yeah, that, that, I agree. See, I mean, that's, that's maybe part of it. Is there that much in Toy Story 1 that's supposed to be really disturbing? Isn't it mostly just kind of child-friendly and just, I mean, just the, the, the moment that you just, the, the core concept, toys are actually alive, you know, I just, it's a kid's film. It's made for children, and it's not for me. It's just plain and simple not for me. Because I'm sure that with that idea, it does well. I'm sure of it. Certainly everybody loves it. I, I yeah. It's probably really, really good. Now. I acknowledge there are some things that a lot of people love that aren't that good. But I do think Toy Story is excellent. It's just not for me. But, but yeah, you know, if, if I'm going to sit down and watch something that's more or less for children, I... God, I, I can't... You, there has to be something in there that is not for children. And, I mean, it's been an eternity since I watched it. But I think I would still love the first never-ending story movie. And part of it is that that movie, it's... I mean, when you actually look at... If you are watching right now, and you are a parent, and you haven't watched the never-ending story, the first movie, and you're considering showing it to your children, Watch it by yourself first. Think hard about if that's something you want to show to your children. Because it, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, it is a incredibly sad story. You know, the, the, yeah. So, so, so I like it. But the, yeah, I just, I don't like kid stuff. I didn't, I didn't like it when I was a kid. I don't like it now. You know, the, the only episodes of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that I liked were the, the kind of dark ones, you know. I mean, maybe not by today's standard, but back then, Baxter Stockman becoming a fly was pretty disturbing. You know, considering it's, I mean, you're, it's a show that a seven-year-old is allowed to watch. It's kind of disturbing. And, and that episode in general, like, there are, there are a lot of really, yeah, I, I like that episode. I watched it maybe seven years ago, most recently, and I liked it then. I'd probably like it today. I liked it when I was seven. Yeah, you know, and then there are a lot of really goofy ones. But, yeah, just, anyway, it just, it feels like a lie to me, a lot of children's entertainment. Like if you're if you're telling your children, like, I mean you might it might you might as well just you know you know put them in a blanket all day long or something. It just it's a lie. Nothing nothing is that positive. 
nothing is as positive as a lot of Disney. I will say the lot of Disney movies. I've I do have I, I do really I, I love the original Aladdin. I'll probably never watch the new one. The the remake. For so many reasons. And Beauty and the Beast. There there are others that I really respect, but those are Maybe the main ones. Anyway, Lion King. That was it. Yeah. And I do have a soft spot for Hunchback of Notre Dame. And I enjoy watching Hercules because it's such, you know, Lindsay Ellis described it as Disney's beautiful hot mess. And I think that is perfectly. Her video on the Hercules animated movie is amazing. It is, it is, yeah. If you're, if you're only gonna watch one Lindsay Ellis movie on a Disney movie, ah, the one for the remake of Beauty and the Beast is incredible as well. Okay, never mind. Watch every single video she's done on a Disney movie. She just did one on Aladdin. Amazing. I mean, I mean more, more on the the way that they treated Robin Williams and the trend that it started. The fantasy violence is fast and furious, dolls exploding, people cut and shot. However, isn't depicted in a gory or graphic nature. And yeah, yeah. Deliciously perverse. Yes. Aside from some funny puns, most of which have already been spoiled by the TV spots and some pop culture references that no child and most adults won't understand, Small Soldiers just isn't funny enough. See, I, yeah. The, the, I enjoy so much of the movie that has nothing to do with pop culture, but yeah, if, if, if you don't find the, if, if you don't enjoy, if you don't get any enjoyment out of the the way that it takes this incredibly disturbing stuff and and then has this really light stuff yeah yeah I'm, i mean if you if this was live action this would be one of the most violent war movies that i'd ever seen you know i i haven't seen very many where someone is pulled apart where where they have complicated leg surgery done without anesthetic and where it's played partially for laughs someone's head ripped clean off like yeah a charmless and often mean-spirited quote-unquote kids movie that no kid under eight should be taken to see. Eight? Really? I, I don't think I would take anybody under 11. Honestly, I wouldn't take anybody under 13, I don't think. Not, I mean, the moment that you have Nick Nitro. I mean, it's clear that it's disturbing to these action figures that he's, that his head is being taken off like that. Anyway, the, the, yeah. So, that was the, but yeah, mean-spirited, and not really a kid's movie. You know, it's, it's a, it's, it's essentially a Trojan horse, you know, it, it the, the moment that you, you let your guard down and think, ah, oh, cute kid's movie, and then you see, you know, this incredibly gory, yeah, think about just the, the dolls, wow, Christy is a mass murderer in this movie, and really, when, when you really think about it, because she knows that they can feel, she knows that they're intelligent, and she just gleefully, you know, bashes them with, like, a baton, a golf club, something, and, like, you know, what's it, you know, like, like, 
she's got this electronic like lawnmower. I mean, she's disappointed when she doesn't get through it. She's like, it's not working. I can't. So, you know, I, I mean, it it cuts them into little pieces. This thing that's what a lawnmower does. You know, and and they feel every single. You hear them scream in agony. You know. Yeah, you know. I wouldn't say it's quite charmless though. But yeah, see, you know, this guy thinks it's a bad thing. I think it's a wonderful thing. I think it's a beautiful thing. This live action animated feature has all the charm of the entirely animated Toy Story plus an audacity all of its own. See, I it's been so long since I watched Toy Story that I I couldn't say if that movie is more charming than this, but audacity, I would definitely say. Joe Dante's unofficial remake of Gremlins, only smaller. I think that's a pretty yeah, they're they're also does is there a gremlin that gets like stuck down a blender? Or does it stick part of a person in a blender? Something like that. Yeah, it's uh Now, let's see. I gotta... Let's see if the... Right. Joe Dante originally wanted the cast of Predator to voice the Commando Elite. Arnold Schwarzenegger would voice Chip Hazard. Shane Black would voice Kip Killigan. Paul Brothers would voice Butch Meathook. Jason Ventura would voice Brick Bazooka. Sonny Landon would voice Nick Nitro. And Bill Duke would voice Link Static. That would have been awesome. That really... I wish it said why that didn't happen. That... I mean, Schwarzenegger does... I don't know if he still does, but he did do a bunch of children's films, especially in the 90s or thereabouts. Was that also Chip? Uh, not Chip, sorry. Phil. Phil Hartman, the, the jingle all the way. Put that cookie down. Anyway. Let's see. Yeah, that, I mean, yeah. This movie featured music by Led Zeppelin, a band notoriously strict about how their music is used in films, games, and other media. Very cool. Stan Winston and his special effects crew met with Hasbro to better understand how toys work. Very good idea, and I think it shows. You really do get the sense. I don't think it would have worked it if not, but you do really get the sense that these things, yeah, you know, when you see them show brick bazooka's you know leg back in and twist yeah that looks like how you prepare that kind of thing the music being played during the scene where they turn the gwendy dolls into soldiers is the theme from bride of frankenstein that's, that's great i really yeah i love their giggling i meant to mention that i re I'm, I'm glad i remember to mention that i love when you first see like a, a lot of them and you just hear this creepy girly giggle and it's again like it wouldn't be that see that part of it is that it's like kids toys are inherently it's not difficult to make them creepy and like and that's maybe also the thing like if if kids toys are going to play a huge role in a film and they're not at all creepy it just doesn't seem it just doesn't make any sense to me to hook one of my favorite characters and actors. And one of my favorite character actors. George Kennedy, Clint Walker, Ernest Borgner, and Jim Brown appeared in the Dirty Dozen. So yeah, the and and do voices here. So that yeah, I quite like that. Now I skipped ahead a little too fast. 
Okay, here we go. On making the movie, director Joe Dante recalled, originally I was told to make an edgy picture excuse me, for teenagers or when the sponsor tie Sponsor tie-ins came in the new mandate was to soften it up as a kiddie movie. Too late as it turned out, and there are elements of both approaches in there. Just before release, it was purged of a lot of action explosions, which is too bad. And again, I would really love to see the version that he... yeah. There were five cast members, we have a dozen, Franz Borgnine, Jim Brown, Clint Walker, George Kenny, and Dick Miller, and on credit for it as an MP at the end. It would have been a sixth member originally doing the voice of Lestat, Richard Jekyll, but he passed away during principal photography. As for Charles Bronson, he refused to lend his voice to one of the soldiers. Again, I wish it said why, because, I mean, it's not like Charles Bronson didn't do some incredibly messed up movies. I mean, he's known for the Death Wish series, and yeah. The Gorgonites were strongly influenced by the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe toy franchise by Mattel. Very cool. And yeah, I, I, I didn't watch it. If I watched it when I was a kid, it made no impression on me. I know what he sounds like, and I know the by the power of Grayskull raising sword thing, but that's it. The vehicles that the Commando Elite construct and that they use to attack and chase Alan and Christie and attack the Flintlaws are heavily influenced by the vehicles from the Mad Max film franchise. I Yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, I read this before watching also, and I read it years ago as well, but yeah, now I really see it. Yeah, that's... See, again, just... Mad Max with action figures how i don't i don't understand how that isn't amazing to you and yeah the head of global tech is named gil mars mars was the roman god of war so yeah makes a lot of yeah See. Yeah, and the Commando Elite were strongly influenced by the G.I. Joe the toy franchise by Hasbro. Let's see. On the film special effects, Joe Dante stated, we were planning to use a lot of Stan Winston's puppets. We made some very elaborate puppets that could do a lot of things, but in practice we found it was much simpler and cheaper to let the CGI people do the work after we shot the scene. So I would say it's one-third puppetry and the rest CGI, even though the original idea was to do mostly puppetry. And, yeah, that's... Nick Nitro resembles Vernon Wells and his character Wes from The Road Warrior. And, let's see... Right, that... Action is, yeah. So, huh. Oh, right, that's, yeah, that's what that was. Yeah, and, and where he says, you know, Wannabe by the Spice Girls, I know that I love the use of this, Psychological Warfare Indeed, and then the quote, Phil, Phil, I love this song. Okay, now, look at the, let's see, yeah, I've only gone for about two hours. I've got time to do some quotes. Let's see. I need, oh, there we go. Excellent. Let me just real quick see. Okay, so we start on page 20. 
and go until we reach. Oh, wow, only 20. Oh, wait, no, never mind. Huh? Twenty seven. Yeah, so that's not a problem. Okay, here we go. I love the smell of polyurethane in the morning. Just because you can't see something doesn't mean it isn't there. You got a lot of guts. Let's see what they look like. We can't have toys out on the market that may be dangerous. How can they be dangerous? Everything on them is standard. The design is standard. The materials are standard. The mechanicals are standard. Even the... Oh. What's oh? What? You just said, oh. No, I said, oh. Oh, like something interesting or oh, true. No, I mean, hey, well, forget the O. I'll go to legal to start on the counter suit. The chips, that's the O. These microprocessing chips. What do they do? Where did you get them from? They microprocess and they come from the land of I saved your job they were designed for the defense department you put munitions chips and toys the chips are a little sensitive to EMP EMP electromagnetic pulse as in the kind generated by the detonation of a nuclear device I doubt that the toy industry has become quite that competitive A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Soldiers! No poor sap ever won a war by dying for his country. He won it by being all that he can be. Damn the torpedoes, or give me death. Eternal vigilance is the price of duty. And to the victors go the spoils. So remember, you are the best of the best, of the few and the proud. So ask not what your country can do for you. Only regret you have but one life to live. Probably supposed to give anyway. The war against the Gorgonites will be won. Commando Elite, let the first shot be fired. Search out the Gorgonites and frag them all. Greetings, I am Archer, Emissary of Gorgonites. Awfully polite for a monster. Alan, friend of Archer, defender of all Gorgonites, keeper of Ankara. Keeper of Ankara? You were using my computer? If I find a virus in there, you're headed for the microwave. This thing can stop. He knows that this, this thing feels pain, and he's threatening to microwave. See, this is how you, you know, forget, you know, Sid from Toy Story. No, this is how, you know, the hero of the story says, if you got, if you gave my computer a virus, I will fry you in the microwave. If it lacerates or detonates, I want it mobile, and I want it lethal. Great, all we need now is a nuclear warhead. I doubt I'll have one in the junk drawer. Nuclear warhead? What are you talking about? The chips aren't shielded against an EMP. A nuclear blast would wipe them out. That's why the military never used them. What kind of moron would put military technology in toys? Well, I would be gizmo over here. Watch out, she's got a baton. It's a baton death march. That's so dark and so messed up and I absolutely love it. And again, it wouldn't have been, they could have, they could have taken that line out of there, you know, and it's like a lot of, a lot of kids don't know what the baton death march is. And I do think that a perfect place for them to learn is by watching Kirsten Dunn's smashing Barbie dolls. Just yeah, that's 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 how that should go. Are you scared? We're all scared. You'd have to be crazy not to be scared.
and I'll I will admit the greetings Alan now shut up is joke that joke is corny. Last time we fought, I woke up with AMFM. All my makeup is cruelty free. Nick Nitro's battery has run out, but his memory will keep going and going and going. It's a small world after all. We are the Commando Elite. Everything else is just a toy. If you can't accessorize, pulverize. Excuse me, you say learn? Learn, learn, yeah. Next. An officer and a gentleman does not strike a lady. I mean, to be fair, they were, like, stabbing at him with, with sharp objects. You know, it's not like they were just, yeah. He has very interesting, like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring to life a bunch of Barbie dolls, stick weapons on them, and I'm gonna lose it if someone fights back against them. But, you know, an eight-year-old is siding with my enemy? Well... I'm going to tie him up and you know, attempt to kill him later. Let's see if her head pops off. That is so messed up. And again, I mean, it's just take every kid knows that, you know, you have some toys where you can just pop the head right off. But the idea that a Barbie doll might try to see if your head would pop off. So what's the seminar your dad's going to? How to make a success of your small business? My suggestion was torch the place. Not a good idea. Arson forensics nowadays is very sophisticated. That was the problem with the, yeah. So when am I going to get the major chip hazard figure? Never if you don't shut up. And yeah, those are them. Yeah, that didn't take long at all. Hmm, I guess. Yeah, I guess this is where I end the video. So, is there anything about this that I haven't already said? I don't currently have plans to do videos on, I don't have cop, I don't own any copies of the Gremlins movies, or any of the uh, Joe Dante movies. This is the only one that I own. I have watched, yeah, like I said, I watched several of them. I guess... But, but yeah, I... I really love the, the way this handles both 
I guess I could I could try to see if I have anything else that has this kind of you know the the stuff that seem you know stuff that's essentially okay for children, and then this stuff that's incredibly messed up and should, I'm. I mean, I would probably. I could imagine some if if. Yeah, there are probably some children who got nightmares from this movie, you know, who would have nightmares about Nick Nitro's head being, you know, popped off and then, you know, just, yeah. Let's see. I guess that is what I... But but yeah, I really I I'm not gonna get I'm I'm not gonna do a rant on the 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 video the nostalgia critic did on this movie and I guess. I would, if, if, I mean, it's been, it's, the movie is 21 years old, so, you know, if, if someone was going to, I, I don't know, Joe Dante today is still, you know, but I'm, I'm sure that you could find someone who could do a really great job. I, I would like a full-on R-rated version of this kind of, of concept. Maybe not an exact, like, the exact same thing. And I definitely don't, I, you know, don't, don't try to make a sequel, certainly. Although I will grant that, you know, the, the, yeah, like I said, Gremlins 2 has some elements that, I mean, I think probably the general consensus is that they, you know, it's, it's lame and they're trying too hard and such, but I can't completely hate Gremlins 2. I cannot. I cannot. But... That was, but the first Gremlins movie is also something that has much more of a limited, you know, in the, in the, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to spoil either of those movies. But, yeah, I, I, it would be fun to, to have a bigger, or, sorry, not necessarily bigger, but another movie like this with a, with a very similar idea and, yeah, I mean, may maybe they could do a somewhat like, like a, a Jurassic World. If if this was Jurassic Park, make a Jurassic World, movie, you know, sequel, some something like that. A sequel that is the that much bigger than Jurassic World is when compared to Jurassic Park one, but yeah, I guess. That's pretty much it, but yeah, the I I don't think I would recast anyone in the movie. I Kev, Kevin Dunn I like in I I feel like he's isn't he always playing someone who's kind of frustrated with what's going on around him, but he's also in like ninety seven Godzilla. I'm probably never going to watch the Transformers movies, but I'm pretty sure he's in the first two or three. And, yeah, I mean, it's... I, I don't think I've seen Miss Cagle, Marion, or the... I, I forget her name, but... Alan's mother in, in anything else. But I guess that's gonna be it. So let's see if I can get a good lighting situation. I mean, you can't see it it's this close. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'm not gonna get a good. Oh, here we go. That's not terrible. You can see it a little bit. Yeah. I guess that is going to be it for this video.
but yeah, I'm really glad I, I sat down and watched this movie again. It's, yeah. I guess the, yeah, I, th I, th I think some fun could be possibly be had if you had like a huge army of, you know, commando elites in like a, like a, uh, what's it called? Like a, like a big city, maybe. In some kind of, yeah, I, th I think maybe it could be. We never really see what a base of theirs would look like. They, they always just use, you know, whatever they, they, you know, bunker down wherever it makes most sense, but they never make a real base. We see what they do when they want to make weapons, when they want to make vehicles. Yeah, I, th I think some, some fun could be had with that kind of thing. And I mean, the, the game, if I found a working copy of the game, there's, I don't know, I mean, I guess via GOG.com maybe it would still work, but yeah. But also, I haven't played the demo of it since 98 or so. It was, you know, I, I liked it fine, if I recall, but I don't... I used to play a lot of real-time strategy games, which again, I, I know that it says it's an adventure game online, on, on Wikipedia and IMDb, but it certainly seemed like a... No, sorry, not a, not a real-time strategy game, I guess, but a strategy game nevertheless. It didn't seem like an adventure game as such. It seemed kind of like a, maybe, a, maybe a game of chess, I guess. If, if I, I think in the demo only you could move. I don't think the enemy really moved. I think they just they, they had like weapons in place and you had to take out those weapons as you move through yeah, but I think actually in that, I'm almost certain actually that you play as the commando elite, so that's kind of interesting. And I do also think, I mean, G.I. Joe, in that the the soldiers are the good guys, you know, the, the bad guys are like that cult or a terrorist organization or something called Cobra. You know, so it is interesting that they chose to make the, you know, the, the, like, supposedly the, the monsters, the, the Gorgonites are the monsters or the bad guys, but really the, the, uh, yeah, I mean, really, the, the commando elite are the real the, the antagonists, the villains of the... Chip Hazard is clearly the villain of the movie. I, I do think that is an, an interesting kind of... You know, I mean, compared to, like, in Gremlins, without spoiling too much, I grant that the, you know, like, the, the Gremlins themselves, the source does not look evil. But the gremlins themselves look evil and are evil, you know. So it's not as though you know, Dante always takes this kind of, I don't know, some would call it contrarian, others would call it satirical approach, you know. And in gremlins, in gremlins, the the ones that look evil are evil, and yeah, you know. That could have been interesting if, if like, if Gizmo turned out to be, like, secretly incredibly evil. Although, I guess, I mean, that is essentially, like, what's it called? Galaxy Quest makes that joke. You know, 
they look like such cute little things, and then they turn out to be these really vicious and and other movies as well other movies that more or less aim for some children you know kids watching have have the joke of like something that appears to be really cute then turn out to be really vicious and yeah I guess that is all that I have to say. I mean, it's it's already been said that in, maybe in some ways, Kirsten Dunst was a better actor when she was younger. You know, I don't I don't know if this is necessarily the best example, but something like Interview with a Vampire shows it quite well, and I guess. Let's see. Excuse me. Does Gregory Smith still have a career? Does he did he do anything after Everwood? Because I I do think that yeah, you know, he's he's like the man. Why was it see and you know, meanwhile I almost called him Bradley Cooper, sorry. I mean, the other one, the Chris. One of the Chris's from the yeah, MCU. What's his last name? Well, yeah, the, the Star Lord. You know, he has a career, but, you know, Gregory Smith doesn't. Yeah, I don't know. I, I would not have expected that he was headed for bigger things than. But then I've always quite liked Chris. Now, I guess, let's see. Just making sure that I don't press, you know, that I don't stop recording right before remembering one more thing I want to say about the movie. I mean, Right, I, you know, I was worried that the VHS copy wouldn't work, so I went ahead and, from from the this the library copy of the of the DVD, free except for tax dollars, which I'm going to pay, regardless of whether I use the library to watch movies or not, and this did have some kind of cool special features, you know the, let's see, we've got a. Yeah, I think the deleted scenes were pretty fun, for example. And it's got a blooper reel, but it's from back when blooper reels were just a lot of, like, people messing up a line and the others, and or others cracking up, and then, the, you know, like, five missed takes of the exact same line without any of, you know, without them being, like, hilarious, where, you know, I, I watched the... the bloopers for X-Men Apocalypse, you know, not too many days ago, where, like, you know, you know, by all accounts, Jennifer Lawrence is someone who does put in effort to, you know, she doesn't, like, just, I mean, she'll occasionally phone in a performance, in X-Men Apocalypse, she does phone in a performance, but she is, she is a professional, she, she, you know, she's fun and, you know, unpredictable and such you know when she isn't playing a character but she, yeah she is she is professional but but you know in that there's like i think three different times where like you know someone someone calls cut and she's like lunch or how about lunch or, or something like that you know and just and and Fassbender and McAvoy do some really great, you know, what's it called, ad libbing of of lines that are complete. You know, these are definitely not going to be used in the movie. It's not like you know, oh, let's have some fun ad lib maybe. No, 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 these are definitely not. Like Fassbender, right after saying goodbye to you know, I get no, no, it's not, it's not a spoiler. He says goodbye to another character, and he's like, I love your body. 
and just, you know, and it's not, you know, let's see, and, and I, I want to say her name is Alexandra Ship, but I'm not sure I've seen her in anything else, but she plays Storm, and there's the, this one shot where, like, she's, you know, she's moving, and then there's, like, a bunch of explosions, and, like, you know, in the actual movie, I think it's Scott firing the, you know, so, something like that. And, you know, right after it's happened, I think they maybe even yell cut. Alexandra Ship goes like, that was awesome! And that's, you know, yeah. You know, today, when you see a blooper reel, it's it's stuff like that. But, you know, back when, yeah. But it, it was, it was a, a fun enough watch. And there's, when, when, when Kirsten Dunst got on the back of the motorcycle or scooter or whatever, and she's like putting the helmet on. She puts it on backwards. And afterwards she looks a little confused. Which tells me that either she's like pretending she messed up. Or she does not really pay attention to what end of like. Or did, did, has she not tried that before? Was that the first time she ever put a helmet on her head? Or at least a helmet with like a visor. I mean, I guess a bicycle helmet isn't, you know, it doesn't matter quite as much if you put, she just straight, you know, she plops that thing down and it's just, and she looks, she looks genuinely confused and surprised afterwards. I mean, when you put on a helmet, you, you kind of, you, you know, you hold it up, you look to see if, you know, okay, this is the visor or, oh wait, I've got it backwards. Let me, okay, that's the visor. And then you, but she just, you know, puts it back and, and just sits there for like, yeah, that's that's pretty funny. So I mean, it's it might be on YouTube as well, but yeah, as as fun. I guess that is. Yeah, the. Anyway. Yeah, what what is it that like like the there's a there's a Sim Snob episode where he like yeah excuse me for a second I think I can find that without too much trouble yeah apparently yeah it's like it's, I I according to the what's it called, movie connections on the IMDb, you know, the, the cinema snob referenced this in two episodes. One of them was his video on the movie Extro, and he said, this is like Joe Dante's Small Soldiers if it were directed by 80s Joe Dante. What is it that, what happened to Joe Dante to make, I mean, I guess 80s, in the 80s, we were seeing really edgy movies that we didn't after, but then at the same time, the 90s was when we got Total Recall, although I guess it maybe started production in the late 80s, so it's like a kind of holdover. Yeah, I mean, I guess the, the 90s were not... Yeah, the 80s were actually edgy, and then the 90s were like trying really hard to appeal to teenagers and thinking they were being edgy but not actually being edgy kind of yeah the the i i would very much like to see him do a movie quite like you know yeah so, something very much like gremlins and with like yeah something that's as bleak and messed up as gremlins but with a concept more akin to, to small soldiers, I, I would like that. And I mean, I if they made another Gremlins movie, it should probably not be in another sequel, but like a reboot or something, I think that could be interesting. I, you know, yeah. Now, yeah, I, I do suppose... That is everything. So, yeah, the yeah, I'm. I feel pretty sure 
I don't have anything left to add. So let's see. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think that is going to be it. So I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.